All right, so as promised, we're going to look at an example. Um, so let's sketch things out here. Uh, now, the first curve a, is a parabola um, with no kind of obvious zeros, right? We'd have to apply quadratic formula to get the zeros. Um, could always complete the square. x plus 1 half squared, right? Putting that in there. Uh, we're adding a quarter, we have to take that off. So we have 20 quarters, so now minus 21 over 4. Um, so we kind of have something which is so the, you know, something like that, right? So there's your, your vertex down there. It's opening upwards. Okay? So there's y equals x squared plus x minus 5. And of course, this is just a line, slope 3, intercept minus 2. Okay. Um, so this is down at like 5, so that intercept is somewhere around there. Uh, let's draw it a little bit steeper, like so. All right. And so there is your 3x minus 2. Okay, and now you can see the region that's enclosed. And one of the reasons you want to draw things is, you know, you have to be able to do this upper minus lower, right? Until you draw the curves, you don't necessarily know which one is the upper curve, which one's the lower curve. So now we realize that this should be my upper curve. So this is my f of x, if you like. f of x is 3x minus 2. This must be my g of x, okay? All right. Now, what's the next thing you need to know? The next thing you need to know is these two points of intersection. Where do they intersect, right? Well, at those points of intersection, they've got the same coordinates, right? So a point of intersection is a point that satisfies both equations, right? Same x value and the same y value. So typically what you do is you say, well, these are going to be an x value where f of x equals g of x. So we set them equal to each other. So for intersections, We want x squared plus x minus 5 equal to 3x minus 2. And we solve this quadratic as usual. Bring everything to one side. x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. And conveniently enough, this is now something that factors. Right? This is going to give us um, x minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, good, good, good. So this tells me that x has to be equal to either minus 1 or 3. So now we know that this is at minus 1, this is at 3, right? Maybe my drawing is not so accurate. doesn't matter, right? The, the drawing doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough for us to see what's going on. All right. Well, now we have everything we need. We've got our a, we've got our b, we've got our f of x, we've got our g of x, we've got our formula. So we put it together. Area is going to be equal to the integral from minus 1 to 3 of f of x minus g of x. And of course, when you do this subtraction, we've actually already done that subtraction once when we tried to f solve for the intercepts, uh, for the intersection points, rather. We have x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay. So we've got three terms in that integral, but we know that we can integrate term by term. We've seen this already for both antiderivatives and for definite integrals. So we go one at a time. We say, what's an antiderivative for x squared? x cubed over 3, antiderivative for, oops, sorry, minus 2x, minus x squared, antiderivative for minus 3 is minus 3x, and we're going from minus 1 to 3, okay? So we plug in the limits, upper limit first, we have 27 over 3 minus 9 minus 9, 
Now we put in the lower limit, minus 1 over 3, minus 1 plus 3. Okay, All right, because minus 3 times minus 1 will give me plus 3. And now we just have to do the arithmetic. So let's, uh, let's try to sort that out. 27 over 3 um, plus a third, we have 28 over 3. So let's just kind of keep track. So 28 over 3, let's deal with the fractions. And then we have minus 18 uh, minus 21 plus 1. Minus 20. Okay. Which has me worried, right? Because we shouldn't be getting a negative answer. Oh, ha! Why? We mix them up, right? What was the upper curve? It wasn't the parabola. It was the line. So we've been wrong all along. You've probably been yelling at your screen. You knew I was wrong. We should have a minus sign out front of this whole thing, right? So minus, plus, plus, plus. OK, fixes it. Should be the other way around. So 60 minus 28 gives us 32 over 3 for the area. Okay, and just like happened here, right? If you come up with a negative answer for area between curves, you should know something is wrong, right? Area can't be negative. So if you get a negative answer, chances are you mixed up which is the upper curve, which is the lower curve. You should go back, revisit, and, and catch that mistake, right? Correct that mistake. Don't leave a negative answer on your test paper because you know that a negative answer is wrong. Try to find that mistake. We'll look at one more example. And then we're going to move on. We're going to look at average value.